Our concern this evening is that the NDC mounts an election petition and Johnson Asido Nkatia, the general secretary of the NDC, tells the Supreme Court that he does not have independently collated election data, election outcomes data for the National Democratic Congress relating to, first, the total number of valid votes cast. He doesn't have it. He doesn't know it. He doesn't bring it to the Supreme Court. It doesn't form part of his petition, the total number of valid votes cast. The total number of votes cast as far as they are concerned for President John Dramani Mahama. Johnson Asid Nkatia, the General Secretary of the NDC, doesn't have it. It doesn't form part of the documents that he brings to court for the election petition. He's going to court to, the, to challenge the declared results and the gazetted results. He doesn't say that as far as we are concerned, this is what it ought to be. He doesn't say that. Then he's asked, what are the results of the, the person you are challenging? the eventual declared winner, the second respondent, Nana Kufuado. What in your coalition document, what do you have? He doesn't have it. But the law um, obliges the Electoral Commission to give duplicate pink sheets at polling stations to political parties. When you hear that we have paid money, the taxpayer has paid X number of millions for election, 17 million for election, 16 million for election, 25 million for election, that's what the money goes into. The money goes into the organization of the election. The money goes into the Electoral Commission being able to pay for printed documents. The money goes to the Electoral Commission providing security, inviting parties to be there, paying print houses to print pink sheets. And the number of pink sheets is the same as the number of political parties who participate at the election at the local polling station. So why does a big party like the National Democratic Congress, who has been given duplicate pink sheets by the Electoral Commission as an obligation imposed by law on the Electoral Commission, the Electoral Commission has been told by law that when you have counted at the police station in Paul Adumatri got 19, uh, Asama, uh, uh, Ekwia Mansa got 25, uh, Kwesi Mintim got 16, and you have written all that, Parties must sign against it. When you have finished, give duplicate to each of the political parties. So at the end of poll, at the close of poll, at the polling station, the NDC and the MPP and the CPP, they have a right to the pink sheets. And the Electoral Commission has an obligation to give it to them because all of that has been paid by taxpayers' money. How then does a party go to court to mount a petition and say that I don't have the results? I cannot understand it. I believe they have the results. The NDC must come and show the results that they have. Unless, of course, they are concerned that the results that they have may not make their case. But if the results they have will make their case, for which reason they have mounted an election petition, whether the petition is successful or not, they owe it to Ghanaians to show the Ghanaian people that we have the election results. And as far as we are concerned, this is what ought to be the correct figures allotted to the various candidates because we have done this in 38,000 polling stations because the Electoral Commission was obliged to give us duplicate pink sheets. Joe FM did projections and gave results, 98% of it. I'll show it to you tonight. Joe FM was not obliged, the Electoral Commission was not obliged to give Joe FM pink sheets. They were not obliged to give Metro TV pink sheets. Imani Ghana Limited was able to collate results. All other organizations, European Union here and there, they were all able to collate results. The taxpayer didn't pay for them to collate the results. You and I, the taxpayer, you paid for the MPP and the NDC and the CPP to be given duplicate pink sheets. You paid for it. I paid for it. The parties paid for it. So what is the point about NDC saying that I don't have it? We have to make it impossible for the NDC to say they don't have results. They must bring the results. You can't say you don't have results. What is the meaning of you don't have results? A political party, big like the NDC, been in power for many years, has very important people there, very nice people, great people, Alaji, Hudu Yaya, Kospio Gabra, President John Dramani, John Mahama, Professor Jenano Pokwajiman is an educationist. She was the vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. All of these people are part of the NDC team. And Johnson Asedo Katia goes to court and on three important questions, he says, I don't have the results. What is the meaning of this? Are, we, are they taking Ghanaians for granted? Is the NDC taking Ghanaians for granted? Are they taking their own people for granted? You are taking your supporters for granted. You don't have results. 
The taxpayer paid for you to be given pink sheets in 38,000 odd polling stations. The taxpayer paid for it and you don't have the results? What is the meaning of that? You don't have the results. We cannot accept that. And I mean, this is, I don't know whether people, I don't know how you see it. I mean, my dear viewer watching, uh, the president will say fellow Ghanaians. Some people say uh, countrymen and women. Rawlings used to say that. My dear viewer watching, do you think it is fair for the National Democratic Congress to mount an election petition covered by the whole country on television at the cost of the taxpayer? And when we want an improvement to our electoral system, when we are desperate to find the truth, the general secretary of the party says, I don't have the results. What happens to the pink sheets that were given to you? I suspect that Johnson Asiedun Katia has the results. I'll show you why. But before then, let's look at the first press conference, and that's why I showed it as a teaser. Let's look at the first press conference the NDC MPP held when Anaku Fado decided in 2013 that he was going to cause to mount an election petition against the results of 2012. Nanaku Fado refused to congratulate President John Dramani Mahama when the results were declared. When Dr. Farijan declared the results, Akufado refused to congratulate John Mahama. He refused. Why did he refuse? He said, I, I don't think that what Afarijan has declared is the correct results. Okay, so there was a lot of hula baloo around the country. There was some skirmishes here and there. Then all media heard that Akufado has called a press conference. So everybody was invited. Everybody was excited. All the international media were still in the country. This was becoming an election dispute. Kenya had just had an election dispute in which President Kufo had been part of it. And this was becoming a problem. So when Anna Kufado called the press conference, in fact, so big was the press conference, they couldn't hold it in the GGA press center. They held it at the Alisa Hotel so that it's in a big space. And everybody was going to listen to Akufado to find out what is his problem. What is Akufado's problem? Why is he saying that he will not accept the election results? Everybody trooped there. Listen, a sound bite of what happened at the press conference. When Akufado first held the press conference to indicate that he is going to file an election petition. Listen, this is what happened. Now, across all the 24,000 or so polling stations that we've looked at so far, Overvoting was 620,443. Voting without verification was 456,933. Same serial number for different polling stations, 50,278. Missing signature on the pink sheet, 208,523 and words and figures don't match 3,841. Now, in total, these votes amount to 1,340,018. All of this is backed by documented evidence. The party did try to alert the Electoral Commission and recommend polls to investigate our concerns. The Electoral Commission will not listen and adopted the attitude that had always characterized their reaction to any criticism of their actions. Quote, if you are dissatisfied, go to court. Dr. Baumia, in that press conference, even before the petition was mounted, isolated 1,340,000 and 18 various forms of infractions occurring on the pink sheets. I believe that that is the responsible way that political parties must behave when they want to challenge the results, for which reason they will not congratulate the announced winner and they want to mount an election petition. That's civilization. That's the civilization of 2013. I believe it's the civilization of 2013. My concern is that the NDC must come out and tell us what they have if what they have supports the case of a petition, if what they have supports the events of Article 63.3, which is that the eventual winner of the presidential election must have won 50% plus one of the total votes cast. If the NDC have all of that, if President Muhammad the petitioner has all of that, I beg him, he should let his people show it to us because it's important for Ghanaians so that it helps us to develop our electoral systems. The issue about going to court to say I don't have the figures and that I'm just here to challenge the Electoral Commission's declaration, I don't think it's fair to Ghanaians. 
It's particularly unfair to the supporters of the NDC, the rank and file of the NDC who stood in the, in the light and in the sun and cast their ballot for President John Dramani Mahama. And they believed that they, were, they had enough numbers or they had marshaled enough numbers for President Mahama to be declared the eventual winner. It's unfair to those people that Johnson Asedu Katia says, I don't have results. You can't say that as a general secretary of a big party, like former member of parliament, general secretary of the NDC, you go to an election petition and you say you don't have results. So there were 38,622 polling stations. There were 311 special voting centers. There were 275 constituency coalition centers. There were 16 regional coalition centers, and there was one national coalition center. Go through that again. 38,622 polling stations, 311 special voting centers, 275 constituency coalition centers, 16 regional coalition centers, and one national coalition center. And guess what? Mr. Taxpayer, Madam Taxpayer, Mrs. Taxpayer, listen to me. You paid for the NDC to have representation in each of those places that you are watching on your screen. In all the 38,000 polling stations, you paid for the NDC to be given a duplicate pink sheet of what happened at each of those polling stations. In the 311 special voting centers, you paid for the NDC to be given a document of what had happened. In the 275 constituency coalition centers, you and I paid for all political parties to be given the document. And in 16 regional coalition centers, we all paid for the NDC to be given the document. And in the one national coalition center where the, uh, the, uh, the, the electoral commissioner was at the strong room, we all paid for that uh, also to happen. So, in the circumstances, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I hope that you understand my case. I'm saying that the NDC cannot say that they don't have figures. The other day, there was cross-examination examination of Johnson Asiedu Nketiah. And he provided something that gave a lot of comfort to those of us who are worried about the NDC and their figures. In his witness statement, he mentioned something about numbers have been padded. Very interesting. How did Asiedu Nketiah know that numbers have been padded? He's comparing the numbers that were published to some other numbers that he has. So the NDC have the pink sheet. They have the pink sheet in 38,000 police stations. They have it. They should come and tell us that on the calculation of their pink sheet, this is what John Dramani Mahama got. On the calculation of their pink sheet, this is what Akufado got. If they don't do that, then I beg to say, with the greatest of respect, it is dereliction of duty of the highest order of a political party to the people of a third world country is dereliction of duty. You allege, huh. you allege mm. that four, six, nine, three mm -hmm. votes was added to in favor of the second respondent. That is your allegation. My Lord, if you look at my statement, mm. I indicated that I will bring a sample of the constituencies and polling stations where pardon took place. I did not indicate that that is an exhaustive list of all the places where the pardon took place. Sir, and if we, I ever want... We are using the numbers that you have brought to the court to assist the court. I am saying that the total of 4693 is what you have put down there. Is that correct? I brought it as a sample. I did it in my statement actually indicates that this is from a sample of this particular constituency. I don't understand sample to mean the total of the, uh, the population. Now, did that the 510, 790, you did that the 4, sorry, my lords, did that the 4, 693 from 510, 790. What do you get? With all due respect, I, I, don't, I don't see the point of the. the with the greatest respect, you are being rude to the court, not to me. Okay. My yeah, come again. I'm saying that, mm -hmm. did that 
4693 from 510790. What do you get? 6993. I got 506097. Uh, Good. I am suggesting to you that even if this your number as alleged, which is denied, even if it is deducted from the total value votes of the second respondent, he still has won by your own sheet by 51.246%. I am putting it to you. My Lord, I deny that because uh, that you are subtracting apples from mangoes. Well, this is a sample. <laughs> You want to take a sample from a population of another group. And I don't see where the calculation is coming from. You see, from. I am suggesting to you that you have no evidence to support your allegation, and that is why you have brought only what you have. I am putting it to you. My Lord, we are not in court to try to declare another presidential uh, results by us. We are in court to challenge the performance of a constitutional duty of a first respondent and to see whether that duty has been discharged faithfully. If that is so, then I'm suggesting to you that you are not, by your own showing, you are not in the right form. I decline that, my lord. Now you had earlier told this court that you cannot speak to what happened in the strong room when your two representatives were there. Yeah. Is that correct? That's correct. So you had Johnson Asido Nkatia over there. He has a basis to make a claim on his witness statement that some votes have been padded, some votes have been added to the second respondent being the president, uh, the declared winner, uh, that those votes are 4,000, etc., etc. He's challenging the authenticity of the figure that was given by the Electoral Commission. He's certainly making that challenge based on pink sheets that he has. He has made a calculation in police station pink sheets and said, if you add this to that, to that, to that, to that, in this police station, the, the, petition, the, the second respondent does not get this figure. Then he does a subtraction and says that we think that as the, respondent, the second respondent has been helped by over 4,000 votes by the Electoral Commission. That's what he's saying in his, his petition, and that's what the lawyer is cross-examining him over. Of course, the lawyer is making the point that eventually, even if that were so, the second petitioner, uh, the second respondent also wins the, wins the elections anyway. But that's the point. They have the pink sheets. So it behooves them, the NDC, the petitioner, to come out and tell us that on the total calculation of 38,000 polling stations, what did John Dramani Mahama get? What did Nana Adudankwa Akufuado get? What did other candidates get if they want, if they're so pleased to tell us? But especially, what did John Dramani Mahama get? What did Anna Kufado get? And what was the total valid votes cast on the event of 7 December 2020? Anything short of that will be dereliction of duty. Anything short of that will be dereliction of duty of a political party. How can Imani have results and NDC doesn't have results? How can Joy FM be able to collate results? And Imani and, and, and NDC did not collate results. The, the, the party. The, now, the NDC were complaining about media. I mean, we have had our own flag here in the studio. I've been brutalized and, and beaten about all over with words and everything about saying that congratulating Anna Adodanko Akufado for winning the election two days before the declaration. Fair enough. I said I'm media. Whatever I say is not going to be gazetted. Whatever I say is, but I have to be responsible. I understand that. We made that. Joy FM did that. Many media houses did it. NDC criticized the media in a press conference. On what basis did they criticize the media? On what basis did the NDC criticize the media in a press conference? Because the NDC had pink sheets. So if they were criticizing the media, it would believe that that criticism is mounted on the basis of a compilation of results which is contradictory to what the media was publishing. That would be the only basis on which they would criticize the media. And we all believed when the criticism came that, in fact, that the NDC had contradictory figures. 
up until today, February 4th, in the middle of the petition, Johnson Asiedu Katia, the first witness, the general secretary of the party, goes to the court and says, I don't have results. Really? Really? This is not on. This is not on. The National Democratic cannot do that. What's my good friend Evans Mensa standing on the Joy FM platform telling the whole nation that Joy FM has collated results? Nobody paid Joy FM to collate results. Joy FM is not the electoral commissioner. They don't need to do that. They, they, they don't have pink sheet. They are not entitled to any pink sheet. Multimedia Broadcasting Company, TV3, Metro TV, Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, UTV, Angel TV, all of them, TV Africa. Nobody is entitled to pink sheet. No media house is entitled to pink sheet. No civil society organization is entitled to pink sheet. The National Democratic Congress is entitled to pink sheet. How many times should I say it? I've been covering elections for a very long time, so I believe that I have the competence to address this matter. And I have done a film on election petition. I believe I have the competence to address this matter. And in doing the film to election petition, I spoke to the panel. Justice Atuguba graciously gave me an interview. It's not, every, it's not everything he said that we showed in the film. So I got insight into these things. So I have the competence to address this matter. How can, what, what is the point? We've been covering elections forever. We've covered election petition. How can you come to an election petition and say, I don't have results, I have come to challenge what the electoral commissioner said? You are taking the people of Ghana for granted. You are taking your supporters for a ride. It's dereliction of duty. NDC, stop that. You're a very responsible political party. You cannot do that. No, you can't. You can't do that. And I'm sure that the people in the NDC, some of them will agree with me. Because you can't do that. Dereliction of duty. Watch Evans Mensah of Joy FM. Have a look. With 270 constituency provisional results already published by the multimedia group with just five constituencies left, over 98% of the constituencies have come in. Out of the 270 published, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufado is leading John Dramani Mahama by 500 and 18,000 votes. Here is the breakdown. Nanado has 6,640,809 votes, representing 51.30%. John Mahama has 6,121,817 votes, representing 47.29%. Now others, including rejected votes, comes to 181,576 votes, representing 1.40%. Now the five remaining constituencies to be published by your election headquarters have about 184,000 valid voters. With an average of 78% voter turnout, this could translate into 145,000 votes. Now, if all 145,000 votes are given to John Dramani Mahama, it is statistically impossible for the NDC candidate to achieve 50% plus one or more votes. Now, based on the above, your election headquarters projects Nana Ado Dankwa Akufado to win the 2020 presidential elections media house media house they are not part political party they are not part of ipac they are not part of the interparty advisory committee they are not part of it they are media house they they, they are educate entertain and inform they do super money show drive time all that they do that media house media they are in media house they were able to gather 98 percent of the votes and mentioned what nanado danko akufado has one by one by one and said that given what they have even if you were to add what is left john dramani mahama doesn't win so they stay within the law they make a projection that Nanado dan will win the 2020 presidential elections npp new patriotic party they opened up their place and i was there you saw the interview and i've seen a lot of that on ndc platforms these days in relation to rojo metal and i've seen some of those videos I was there, I was invited there, because I was concerned about MPP has figures. How did they get the figures? So I told my people, 
Can you call the MPP? Let's go and look at it. So we contacted them. And they said, you can come in. And they said, oh, media houses have been have come in. You can come in as well. We told them what time. So you can come at any time. We booked an appointment. We went in with our crew, everything, four cameras. We went in. Joe Anochi was there. Peter McMahon was there. We asked them, how did you come by your results? They said, okay, so let's start. We began in March. We put this in place. We put that in place. We have sites all over the country. We hired Uber cars and hired taxis. We gave them mobile phones. We recruited volunteers. We trained them. And on D-Day, we were ready. And that by the end of D-Day, they knew how many people had voted in every police station even before results came in. They invested into that. That's responsible. National Democratic Congress, up until today, they are not showing us the figures. I believe they have them because they do have them. They have the pink sheets. Just a matter of adding mathematics. You can use calculator to do it. 38,000 police stations. They must come and tell us something. I have to leave it here. People are sending me texts. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not angry. I, I'm just concerned about electoral processes in this country. And even if I'm angry, who am I? I'm nobody. My, my anger doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't worry anybody. Maybe some of you are viewers who worry you. Some will, will probably stop watching. Uh, but you'll watch again. We'll come back on Tuesday. Please watch again. But the point is that we must call out political parties to demonstrate responsibility and not to be derelict in their duty to the people of Ghana. Because political parties are an important instrument in the development of democracy. Edmund Burke of England, way back in the 19th century, described political parties and gave the definition, which has been used by all political science books and government books to describe the meaning of political parties. Google it, Edmund Burke and the definition of political parties. And then you will understand why I'm saying that the NDC has been derelict in their duty if they do not provide the results that they have. Talk, Google Edmund Beck.